Hi there, it's Melody Brooke again. Um, as I mentioned in my title here, today I wanna to talk about ownership and what that is and why that's so hard for some people to do. One of the biggest complaints I get with uh, clients in therapy is that their partner or their boss or uh, their friend has very a very, very difficult time taking ownership for their part in any situation. And so I wanna talk about what ownership is. And, I, and if you've read my book, you understand that ownership is very key to being able to step out. Hi, Megan. Uh, to being able to step out. Hey there, hey there Lorelai. Uh, to being able to step out of that cycle of egocentrism that gets us stuck in a place of either feeling like a victim or feeling like a potential victim, or then going on the attack or you know doing the rescuing thing of sweeping everything under the rug and pretending everything's fine. So the key to really moving out of the cycle of egocentrism is ownership. And ownership is huge. Um, ownership is so difficult for some people because I think a lot of times it's just a simple matter of they don't understand what it is that ownership really is and why it's so important to the other person to hear that. So I have to really work with my clients in session to understand that. So I want to talk about what um, what ownership really is, why it's so important, and the difficulty that people have with it, and what we can do to help ourselves get through that and, and be different. So, um, what ownership really is. Okay, Own ownership really is the ability to take ownership of, um, that's, hi Frank, hi Paul, um, taking, the ability to take ownership is the ability to own your truth, your reactions, um, your own emotions, and owning the impact of your own behavior. And it, it, what it is not is blame or credit. And this is what a lot of people struggle with, is they get stuck in that, um, that paradigm of blame and credit. And what I'm talking about there is, if, you, if you're willing to take the credit for something, well then you're gonna end up taking the blame for it as well. And that whole credit blame dynamic is part of what keeps the cycle of egocentrism going because if you're taking credit that sort of builds your ego up makes you feel better about yourself and if you're taking blame you go into shame you feel bad about yourself and, and thing or you feel um, defensive and you are reactive so it's really important to understand that in order to get yourself moved out of hi Cindy hi Bob um, hey Carlos, um, is to be able to learn how to step out of that, that cycle of egocentrism and into a place of taking ownership. And ownership, again, is about being able to own your impact, your emotions, your um, way of reacting to things, and not expecting other people to take responsibility for your feelings or it's also not taking responsibility for other people's feelings. Hi, Zach. Hi, Cindy. Um, so when you find yourself in a situation where um, perhaps somebody's called you out on something or they've just said how they feel about something and you're um, struggling with that, understand that you don't have to go into blame. So you don't have to go into self-blame either. So what we tend to do when we get called out on something, which generally happens in a conflictual situation where we feel like um, our point of view or something that we've done or our opinion or our actions have created an impact on someone else. And so then the question is, how do we, how do we respond to that? And, and knowing how to respond in a way where we are taking ownership and we're not going into that blame cycle will help us to develop healthier relationships. It'll help us feel better about ourselves overall and prevent us from getting trapped into a place of feeling like we either have to take the credit or the blame for whatever happens. And that dynamic, that cycle that we get thrown into that sends us into places of not feeling good. Hello there, I think that's Carwin. I don't have my glasses on, so if I don't say your name right, excuse me. Um, so, so the first thing is understanding what ownership is. Again, ownership is, and um, so if you're just joining us, um, ownership really is um, having an understanding of the impact that you have and not taking ownership of the impact that, that, that you don't have anything to do with, not taking ownership for 
the way that, um, wow, you're from Iraq. Well, hello, hello there from Iraq. That's awesome, I'm so glad you tuned in. And anybody else that's the first time on, please let me know where you're from. I'd, I'd be very interested to know where you're from. So ownership is not um, taking responsibility for someone else's feelings. We can't own what, what doesn't belong to us and we are not responsible for what other people feel, what other people think, how they react, um, if their feelings are hurt. We are not responsible for that. Now that does not mean that we do not care. Ownership does not require, require that we not care, but it does require that we step back and recognize that we are not responsible for their reactions. Hi Cheryl, so happy to see you. Uh, we are not responsible for how other people respond to us. That doesn't, again, mean that we don't care and we don't wanna be aware of the impact because that, in fact, is what ownership is. It's being able to take ownership, is being able to recognize and accept that perhaps we've had an impact that is different than what we intended. And so, so it's important to allow ourselves to not take ownership or responsibility for someone else's emotions and to, to recognize that we are responsible for our own emotions, our own actions, our own behaviors, and our own impact, but we're not responsible for how the other people take things. Um, hi, John. So, in order to learn how to move through that, in order to learn how to get to a place where we can take ownership, um, it, it's a bit of a challenge. So, um, that's what I'm gonna be talking about next. We already kind of talked about what ownership is so if you have questions about that and you're just now logging on you might go back and and watch this afterwards um, thank you Cheryl for sharing that so the the second part of ownership is uh, being able to recognize when we are and when we're not taking ownership um, and recognizing what happens inside of us when that ownership um, challenge happens because what can happen is that we we feel threatened when somebody holds us accountable for something, especially if somebody is deliberately like pointing at us and saying, it's your fault, you did this, what's wrong with you, and attacking us, it's really easy for us to flip into um, being defensive, right? Because when we feel attacked, the sort of natural old brain reaction is to go into attack mode. Some of us don't do that. Some of us will go into people pleaser mode where we, where we do the rescuing and we sweep everything under the rug and we pretend everything's fine and we lie and we placate and we try to make everybody happy. And that again is participating in that cycle of egocentrism and throws us into a way of, um, of internalizing shame when we, um, hi Patrick, when we find ourselves doing the rescuing behavior and of course we can also feel shame when we flip into that self-protect behavior because we act badly we say things we don't mean we act in ways that we're not proud of so learning how to understand that even when somebody is saying to us directly what you did was terrible and blaming us and accusing us of doing things in a bad way and we get reactive and we we get defensive or we go into that self self-protect mode or we go into that rescue mode that what happens is that then we don't respond in a way that is taking ownership. And how, how many of you guys have been in situations where you were trying to hold someone accountable for their behavior and what you got was not ownership at all, what you got generally was an attack back, right? Hi Bradford. <laughs> um, so, so learning how to, um, are, are, in order to, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later, but um, um, learning how to understand that when someone is reacting that way, when they're unable to take ownership, it's largely because they feel attacked, blamed, accused, they're, they feel like you're saying they're wrong, they're bad, there's something wrong with them, and so they will flip into that self-protective or rescuing mode rather than addressing the issue. And when that happens, hi Greg, um, it tends to send us, um, thank you Bradford, it tends to send us to a place where um, we get reactive back, right? So we either will attack back or we will um, just kind of try to gloss over what we said so that they don't continue to have that reaction. And that, that sort of continuing in that cycle of egocentrism prevents us from making um, ourselves more available to the people around us. So the first thing that you need to know about ownership is that 
nothing is, is personal. When we take things personally, when someone says to us, we've done something wrong, or they're angry with us, or upset with us, that, or is telling us you know, that they think we should have some, done something differently, it's really important that we first off don't take it personally. Because what I've learned 99.9% .9 of the time, and that is when I'm working with the most volatile couples, is that, in fact, hi Christy, is that, that taking that, um, anything said to us in a personal way, will cause us to feel more defensive and cause us to trigger that old brain reactivity and cause us to behave in ways that we're not proud of or will cause us to sweep everything under the rug and pretend everything's fine, which is not. So we have to learn how to hear what other people are saying and this kind of moves us into talking about how do we, um, how do we start to behave differently when we feel like something is happening toward us. So when someone is trying to hold us accountable for something, um, we, first of all, we have to not, again, like I said, not take it personally. And when we don't take it personally, it will allow us to really hear what the other person is saying. S instead of hearing the criticism, we can hear what that emotion is or whatever it is that happened that triggered that reaction for them so that we can provide for them a safe response that allows them to feel heard and allows whatever their upset was to be addressed without us feeling like we have to fall into shame and blame and blaming ourselves. So what I, what I know is that old brain really only knows um, those two reactions of blame or sweeping everything under the rug. So when we get confronted with something, our tendency automatically is going to be flipping into um, either that blame response or that, that rescuing response. And our tendency is just to instantaneously do that. It is, it is possible in this learning journey to, to learn how to slow down and do that reaction a little bit differently. So when you feel that automatic, <sighs> Of feelings when somebody is is um, saying something to you that feels like an attack or feels like a criticism or feels like you're being blamed when we get that rush of feelings that's what I call um, what's called being flooded right you get flooded with all these emotions and that's when we're like most likely to react off in a, in a way that we'd rather not do that actually prevents us to connecting. You know, we, we like to think, those of us who do rescuing as an automatic response, um, I'm a counselor after all, that's the one I have to work on, which is um, we look, when we do that, we're also distancing ourselves from the other person because number one, we're not really listening to what their feelings are. We're not really being compassionate. We're just, hi Donna, um, we're just learning, we're just reacting to rather than listening to what the other person is experiencing. And we're not really getting their point of view, we're just looking at it from our perspective, which is why that's called the cycle of egocentrism, because we get trapped into seeing only our piece of it and not being able to provide some empathy and um, respect for that other person. But to, but to begin with, we have to start by taking ownership. So we take ownership of, okay, I. One of the, there are some verbal tools that you can use, which is, I can see that you're upset, and I, I didn't have that, that was not my intention, so can you tell me more about what happened and how you're feeling? So that you can put yourself a little bit into that other person's shoes and understand their point of view and, and know that whatever it is that they're experiencing, that's, that's, they own that, you don't own that. Whatever that is, is about them is 100% about them. It doesn't mean you didn't trigger something in them, but it is 100% about them. It's about their past experience. It's about their current situation. Hi, Phoebe. Hey, Aunt. That's my Aunt, Aunt Phoebe, checking in today. I'm glad you're there. Um, so when we can really get it that nothing anybody says is personal, then we can own um, our own boundaries enough to be able to hear someone else's reactions as being about them, their upset, their reality, their world, their experiences, and it will provide us the opportunity to be able to be empathetic and to be, provide them the empathy, which is what pulls us into that cycle of ego, or, or compassion rather than the cycle of egocentrism. 
So that's how we deal with it when it's us, right? So what about when we're trying to get someone else to take ownership? How do we do that? Well, obviously we can't because that's part of the cycle of egocentrism's challenge is that we want people to do what we want them to do. We want to feel in control. We want to feel empowered. And unfortunately, we have zero control over anything. So we cannot control what another person does or does not do. So that's the first thing we have to own the truth of. So again, if you're just now tuning in, um, I'm talking about ownership and how that is so difficult for some people and how um, it triggers our reactivity and prevents us from being able to get into connection with other people when we don't know how to take ownership. And what I see with my couples over and over and over again is the difficulty that people sometimes have being able to say, wow, I can see that something I did had an impact on you that was not my intent, but I'm very interested in knowing what it was that happened so that maybe I could prevent that in the future. And it doesn't mean, again, that you are responsible for it. It's not about trying to please them, but it is about being able to provide and to gain enough information from that person that you can have empathy for them. And then that will impact you in one way or another. Now, sometimes that doesn't mean you will change anything that you do, but it will help you understand that when you behave this way or, or say this thing, that that is a natural reaction that your partner's gonna have. Um, oh, I'm sorry that your computer is acting up. I know that's hard. Um, and just getting a new one, that's 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 tricky. Hey, Phoebe. Um, so I appreciate you're here at all. And then you can go back and watch the whole thing from the beginning um, on my web page, on my um, Facebook page. Also, I'm going to have it on the Melody Brook LPC page as well. So check that out. And it's probably easier to find on my Melody Brook LPC LMFT page. So um, if it's... If it's someone else, when we are wanting to express to someone else um, a problem that we have, say they've done something that, that we had a reaction to, that we felt uncomfortable with, that we felt unhappy about, how do we do that in a way which makes it easier for them to take ownership? We can't control whether they do or not, obviously, but there are some ways that we can make it easier for them to, to make it safer for them to be able to do that. And recognizing that we do have that power is huge. Um, we, we don't have that control, but we do have the power to make a difference in how, um, how, how that person feels when we step into um, expressing our and owning our feelings with another person. So in order to take ownership and not feel like a victim, when somebody does something that creates a feeling response in us, if we want to deepen that relationship, now if you don't care about deepening the relationship, you know, you can just ignore it, that's fine. But if you really want to deepen the relationship, and if, you, if, if what you are about is moving into a deeper level of connection with people, then it's going to be important for you to be able to state things in a way that makes it safer for them to, to speak their truth to you which means you've got to step up a little bit and deal with the anxiety that you will feel. And yes, undoubtedly you will, because one of the things that I know for sure is that old brain is very insistent that we continue to act out of that old brain reactive egocentric place. It just, um, unless you've got a lot of practice at it, it becomes, it's, it's really difficult to step out of that reaction and allow yourself to just take ownership and speak your truth without intending to harm protect or control the other person and in order to do that okay what you need to do is to be able to say the words I just noticed that I felt and say something about how you felt when you and then say when you and describe what it was what they said did whatever it was in their behavior that triggered a reaction in you um, and if you can say that from a place of truly believing and knowing for a fact that it's not about them, this is just information about you that you want to share with someone who matters to you. So you just speak your truth. Hold on, I gotta take a drink. My mouth is a little dry here. Be willing to speak your truth. Hi, Yvonne. Um, and say to that person that you love that matters to you, who's a, um, maybe a business partner or someone who is important enough to you to maintain a closer relationship with, be able to say, I just noticed that I had these feelings when you did this and this is why. 
So I noticed that I had these feelings when you, and this is why. Hi. <laughs> um, so when you can say it in that way, you're then owning your feelings and you're not projecting them onto the other person because what do we have a tendency to do? What we have a tendency to do is go, oh, I can't believe you just did that. Don't you know that how wrong that is? You know, what? A, you just really messed my schedule up for today. Or, wow, I can't believe that you were so rude to me just now. Those are the kinds of things that will come out of our mouths instantaneously, right? When we are... Um, when we're upset about something that just happened. And when we're upset with something that just happened, sometimes it's really, really hard for us to just take ownership. We just react. We just go quickly out of the, out and just pop off some reaction. So one of the key factors in being able to take ownership is learning how to slow things down. And one of the ways you can slow things down, hi Ronaldo, um, is to take a few deep breaths. Maybe even just walk away for a minute and say, you know what, I just, just give me a minute, I'll be right back. And walk away, calm yourself down, and don't just keep reiterating what just happened in your head, because the more you feed that monkey in your brain, the, the louder it's gonna yell at you. If instead you think about something else, you go for a walk in nature, you take a few deep breaths, you watch a funny video, you do something that gets your mind off of what just happened so that you can settle enough to go back and speak your truth to that, that other person. And if you, um, if you practice, um, hi Ronaldo, um, if, you, if you learn to practice um, mindfulness, which I've talked a lot about here before, that ability to um, sort of let everything go and be in the present moment, it can really help you to move into a place of being able to respond differently when, when people do or say things that upset you. Speak your truth. That's taking ownership. And then if someone, the other piece of that, I want to finally get kind of get to this, um, is that, so what do you do when someone holds you accountable for something? Maybe they've even said it in a nice way. They're not blaming, they're not attacking, um, but it still feels difficult because none of us likes, I mean, very few of us actually are comfortable with confrontation. And it's difficult for a lot of us. Hi, Mark. So glad you're on. Um, love, love our film. I'm so happy that you cast me in it. That was, a, the, uh, that was an awesome film. Um, so uh, going back to taking ownership. Um, so learning to settle your own mind, settle your own em emotional system so that you don't overreact to a situation and become overly um, self-protective or overly rescuing allows you to respond in a way that's responsible where you can take ownership and if somebody is attacking you and you feel that flood of emotions just take a time out you know I still tell people just go in the bathroom for like two minutes and close the door take a few deep breaths go mindful focus on your sensations focus on your breath notice how your body is feeling notice the weight of your body on what you're sitting on notice the sensation of air on your skin. Notice what sounds are around you. Focus on those things to settle your mind. Then you can come back and say, wow, I just noticed when you said that, uh, I had a lot of feelings. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? And then be willing to hear the other person's perspective without having to take the blame for it. Because the truth is, like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, we are not, what we did or what we evoked in that other person has nothing to do with us. But there's something that we did or said or a tone in our voice or a way that we moved or something that, that happened that created a reaction in them that made them uncomfortable. And knowing the information about them, knowing what it is that upsets them, knowing what it is, hi Sherry, so glad to see, to see you here. Knowing what it is that's caused their to them to have this what they experience as a negative reaction is important for us if we want to maintain a relationship with them and it doesn't mean again that we have to change anything but it's really important just for us to have that information so that we can know okay when I do this when I behave this way this is what's going to happen when this happens I know I'm going to get this reaction from that person and without taking it personally so so when someone does come to you and 
say to you something that they felt that you did wrong or that they had a problem with or they had a reaction to, do your best to settle yourself, take a deep breath, go mindful if you need a break, go do that, and then come back and just give them the information. Say, okay, tell me more about that. And if you can't even mirror back to them what you heard them say. So what I'm hearing you say is, and just mirror back what you've heard them say. And then ask for more information. Find out what it was in particular, how it happened, um, what they felt about it, and just get as much information as possible from them about what their experience was. And then at that point, you can make the opportunity to validate their emotions so that then they feel like you are taking ownership. Okay, what is validation? Validation is not taking the blame. Validation is not agreeing with them. Not necessarily, it can be, certainly, because if, if they said, well, I'm, I'm upset that you came late to this meeting because we really needed to get started on time, then you can validate that. So you know you were late, you know you needed to get started on time, and you can say to them, I get it, I did, I was late, I did intend to be here on time, and I did not make it, and I can completely understand how you could be upset that I did not make it on time when it was important that I be here. So you take ownership, say, that is what happened, and I understand why you feel the way you do, because that is what happened. So that's one of the many ways to take ownership. Another way to take ownership is to say to that person, okay, I hear what you're saying, and it makes sense to me that you would be upset because I know this thing about you that makes that make sense. For example, back when I was in, in college, I had this guy that um, I was going out with that um, <laughs> I really liked him, he was funny, he, en he enjoyed my company, we enjoyed our, our time together, but every time he showed up, listen to this, he was two hours late, every single time. Two hours, not two minutes, not 10 minutes, not 20 minutes, two hours. So what, <laughs> what I'm saying is, that kind of made me sensitive for a while to people being respectful enough of me to show up on time. So my reaction to a person being a few minutes late was probably bigger than somebody else's reaction might be to someone being a few minutes late because I had this previous history of someone who really disrespected me in that way. And, and so now um, in, that, in the past when someone would say they were late, then I would have this reaction. So you could say to me, oh, I understand. It makes sense that you would be upset because I know that you have a history of, of people just not showing up for you for hours on end. So it makes total sense to me that this would be upsetting to you. Do you see how that works? The third way to validate, which is really an awesome way to validate, especially if you're struggling with making sense out of what a person is saying to you, because sometimes it just doesn't make sense to you, right? I've had plenty of times with my couples where you know their version, their partner's version of reality did not even come close to matching their own version of reality. And so in order to, to truly help your partner feel validated in that situation, what you can say is, well, it makes sense to me if you were looking at it from that perspective, I can see how that could be upsetting to you. So an example of that is, you might say to a partner maybe who said, well, you just acted like you didn't care about me. So if you don't feel like you have acted like you don't care about them, but that was how they experienced you, what you can then say is, well, it makes sense to me that you would be upset if what, you th if, if what I did made you think that I did not care about you, I can totally see why that would be upsetting to you. And that's totally validating, that's taking ownership of what you did, upsetting them. You can take ownership of the impact that it had and giving them an understanding of that you really get it, that you did indeed upset them, even if that wasn't your intention. Okay, um, please message me below if you have any questions. Um, We've just got a couple of minutes left here. If you have any thoughts, ideas of your own about this, um, struggles that you might have with taking ownership, because what I do know is people who carry a lot of shame um, 
Hi, Kathy. Um, I'm just now about to close out here, but make sure you tune back in. You can go back to my Melody Brook LMS, uh, LPC LMFT page <coughs> or back on my, um, on my page and, and see the whole version of this. But what I was just talking about is the power of ownership and why it's so hard for some people to take ownership. And I want to kind of go back a little bit to that last piece, which is it's so difficult sometimes for people to take ownership because they are extremely shame-based. And by that I mean they have old, old history of feeling shame based on things that happened to them as a child, based on how they were parented, um, lots of reasons why a person can carry a lot of shame that they are pretending that they don't feel because we, we all have this sort of facade that we have to put out there to the world to make people think that we are okay when even though when we don't feel okay inside. And that's not always easy to recognize because sometimes people look pretty darn good on the outside when in fact they're in a lot of shame inside. So sometimes for those people, it's extraordinarily difficult for them to be able to take ownership of what it is their impact has been on you. So when a person is unable to take ownership and when they refuse to do it, I want you to maybe try and reframe that a little bit and understand that it's not coming from a place of selfishness or even narcissism so much as their own shame. They are so stuck in believing that if they if they say that they they are taking ownership for it that they will go into shame and and the shame spiral is so bad for them that they can't allow themselves to go there so um, I want you to try and have some empathy for those people who just can't find their way to taking ownership it's a very painful kind of relationship to be in if you're with a person who struggles with that um, Ronaldo says, recently I was asked to take ownership uh, of a mix-up on who is going to run a meeting. <laughs> when I showed all the facts, I couldn't take on. I thought I shouldn't take ownership. The other guy said I wouldn't let it go. Um, it, it was kind of amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, there are times when those mix-ups happen, right? And I see that with my couples all the time, is that they... Um, have some kind of stupid misunderstanding and neither one of them will take ownership and then it just gets into a battle. When you don't have to take the blame, um, which is what I'm talking about, Ronaldo, that's a very perfect example of what I'm talking about. You don't have to take the blame, you just understand that there was a, that there was a mix up and that you didn't understand what was happening. Obviously other people didn't understand what was happening and you can own that that other people are, you can own that there was an impact because there was some confusion, but you don't have to take the blame for it. So that's that's kind of why I'm gonna end for today. But um, I'm gonna be doing these every Monday at um, four o'clock. I'm also on the four at four at four o'clock on Thursday with three other awesome women. Um, so check it out and um, check out more about me on melodybrook.com, the links above. And I have a book called Oh Wow, This Changes Everything. You can get it on Audible and Kindle. And it has some workbooks that will help you get into this a little bit deeper if you want to. So thanks so much for tuning in. And I will be here next Monday. Talk to you then. Bye.